Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Howard Kotz. I am the Chief Financial Officer here at Anytown University. Um, I come to you today because the President has asked me to give you all a kind of a state of the union as far as the funding goes here uh, at our university. Colleges and universities across the nation are starting to find that funding in many areas um, is starting to become a hot topic. Um, different monies are being allocated to new areas uh, or just aren't coming in at all. Um, you know, federal funding, um, state funding, has really, especially since the economic downturn in 2008, has really been cut back. Um, federal funding these days is really uh, more geared towards individual students and research projects by you know small groups of students or a, one particular student. State funding these days are really being dispersed to help with the larger scale projects and general operations of the institution, upkeep uh, for buildings, building new buildings, um, those types of more structural kind of avenues. Schools are relying now on grants, uh, which can, can take a lot of work. And uh, that's kind of a, a catch-22 because you want to be able to employ grant writers, but you also need to have that funding you know, coming in to be able to afford their salaries and their benefits and things like that. <clears throat> um, endowments, you know, some of the smaller scale universities such as ourselves really don't get a whole lot of money, of money when it comes to endowments. Um, so we need to rely on other areas. So what other kind of areas are there when it comes to funding? One of the growing trends um, across the country and actually you know, across the, the world itself are performance-based funding programs. Um, so what is a performance-based uh, funding program? Uh, that's when you, a state takes a certain amount of its funding and allocates it to universities uh, based specifically on certain criteria that is that is set forth, be it course completion rate, um, degree completion, um, how long it could take you to uh, take a person to get a degree, um, retention rate, graduation rate. It, it's all there's a whole lot of different areas that can be incorporated in. Um, in a performance-based funding uh, initiative. At the end of the day, what they're looking for is being able to prove and, and to support um, improvement of student achievement, which makes sense. You know, you have states giving tens of millions of dollars in some areas, and, and in other areas, maybe hundreds of thousands. Um, you know, but they want to be able to see that, they, they want to be able to justify that their money that they're giving, that they're putting in, is actually going towards something. It's going towards student achievement. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, what everyone really wants is to, we want to keep college affordable. We want to keep colleges and universities accessible. And we want to keep them accountable. And this, like I said, this performance-based kind of initiative is is one that is growing around the country and like I said uh, but uh, all around the world actually um, you know and as school leaders you know we can start to feel a pressure um, because we need to be we need to justify uh, the public monies that are being spent so this performance-based funding, has its advantages and disadvantages, you know, and just as with all things, um, you know, most states are allowed to allowed to you know, develop their own measures. You know, where what what are the things that they want to measure um, uh, to justify spending that money, uh, and this allows for some individual individuality between um, 
regional institutions and the level of institution that it is, be a community college uh, or four-year college. Um, and most states tie about 10% or so of their funding to these performance-based um, initiatives. So you're definitely going to have your, your proponents for, for that. Um, as with many policies, um, you know, there tends to be uh, some downfalls, um, some unintended consequences. And that is definitely true when it comes to performance-based funding. You know, if you look at the research and the, the reports and you know, all this, all the material that is out there, you know, you need to be careful about where you're getting your resources. Um, but in it, when you have the resources that we have here, the research resources um, that we have here at Anytown University, you know, you're able to take some time and really look at and, and find credible sources when it comes to the data and the research. Um, so some of the disadvantages that you know, have been found out, and not just in one or two uh, researches, but several different ones, um, you know, this may admit may lead colleges to admit students um, that are more likely to graduate. That makes their numbers look better. Um, what has been seen though is that this. Um, this practice has led to a disproportionate rate, uh, mix of race and ethnic, ethnicity and the lower socioeconomic status folks um, that are applying to colleges. Um, and what has been happening is that colleges and universities that have employed this method are changing who is admitted, you know, not how they educate and how they support the students that are there. Um, and, you know, these, the, the ones the, that are at risk, um, you know, the, the least advantaged folks are the ones that could take, um, make the best use out of higher education to better themselves and put themselves in, in a better position um, post-graduation and, and really help their families because there are resources that they have not really ever had the um, advantage of, uh, whereas as peop as the performance-based funding is becoming more and more popular, you know, f students that have a more stable SES background, um, that have more support, to have more resources, they're actually the ones that are being enrolled more because of the way that it makes graduation rates look. What studies have also found out is that it, it's causing some colleges and universities to offer less rigorous courses. Uh, we've all heard those theories about, you know, underwater basket weaving and that kind of stuff. And the truth of the matter is more and more colleges are offering things like that because it makes their numbers look better. You know, they can justify it. Uh, along with that, you know, great inflation. You know, professors may be more apt to hand out higher grades um, to make them themselves look better and their courses look better and to get the good ratings from the students and, and really justify, um, try to justify, I should say, their roles in the, the university. And I'm not saying being specific with anyone in particular. I'm just saying that across the board, in all the research that I've done, this is a real concern with you know, when it comes to performance-based funding. You know, so what what do we need to do? Um, you know, I think one of the um, main things that that we need to look at uh, is if we are to to go with this performance-based funding. You know, how can we limit those unintended impacts? Um, because there are, like I said, there are advantages, but there are also disadvantages. So there's, maybe we can come up with a common ground. Um, you know, keep it simple. You know, the, the f 
fewer measures that we have may be the best. Um, my one of my big things is goals. You know, clear and concise goals. Um, how? How are we? What do we want to achieve? How are we going to achieve that? And in what time frame are we going to achieve that? And I think one of the things that we need to do as a group is look at, you know, something along the lines of a minimum percentage of enrollees each semester are what are included underneath that at risk in that at risk category. You know, so not only are we including them, but have some, some incentives for students and, and for, for the university in general. Um, when those at-risk students succeed. You know, I want to look at what other schools have done, look at what other states have done, even other countries have done, you know, when it comes to incorporating some type of performance-based funding in, in with them. So one of the things that I want to do is set up some an email uh, address for suggestions. I want to set up maybe some surveys um, for faculty and staff for you all to to give us some feedback um, and some some ideas from students and parents um, university interest groups alumni you know and, and the local community because a lot of our students when they're leaving us um, they're going into the community they're becoming the workers they're becoming the, that workforce um, you know i learned long ago that uh, in a brainstorming process Everything is wide open. Um, you know, no idea gets shot down immediately till it's looked at from different areas. And when you're looking at a grand at the grand scheme of things, how can one little idea maybe tie into another? Um, so that's what I'm asking for. Is uh, one of my uh, plans is to set that up to really get the feedback from you all um, and, and from you know, all interested communities. Um, but once again, I want to make sure that we're keeping college affordable, but we're holding ourselves accountable and we're being accessible to students and everyone that we come in contact with on a daily basis because we are part of this community. Um, and I'm sure that you all have some great ideas. I look forward to hearing them and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a great day.